excitement that we want to praise and worship you. Father, we thank you for Richard. Thank you for bringing him here this morning. Thank you that he's become a friend of this church very much over the last couple of years. Thank you for all his input, his help. At times he's helped us out musically and also his help with the sound desk and the practical things. But above all, we thank you for what he is spiritually, what he carries uh, from the word of God. And we ask that you would anoint him this morning as he speaks. And Lord, open our minds and hearts to receive whatever you want to say to us today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Richard, you're welcome. Thank you very much indeed, Harry. And thank you for the opportunity to come back again, to return. It's um, a privilege, really is a privilege to come back. And of course, uh, very conscious of the incredible changes since I was here in January and February, so many months ago. And like everyone else, I'm going to acknowledge challenging times. Challenging times for everyone but particularly for yourselves. January I came and I challenged you with the question, are you growing as a Christian? Are you growing as a Christian? There's some strong links in that message to the one that Michael brought last week. In February, I came and I proclaimed, God is in control, whatever the circumstances. And I asked you the question, do you get overwhelmed with circumstances, large or small? I know I said it because I looked at my notes. But I did not know what was coming for us and for you. But it's still a truth. And I want to stand on that truth today. It is a truth. God is in control. It may not seem like it for us with so many circumstances where we are challenged, when we do feel overtaken. And we can see in our world around about us people who are struggling incredibly. But God is in control, even when we don't understand it. And it's still a valid question to ask of ourselves. Do I get overwhelmed with circumstances? I have to admit, yes. Not always, but certainly in some circumstances. Today, I want to share something of a personal experience, and it is linked to the messages that I brought in January and February. And in many ways, as I discovered uh, towards the end of the week, I have to admit, it's linked with the message that Michael brought last week. Difficult times are often times of learning and growth. Now, most of us can probably admit that. There is the wilderness experience of testing. But why is it there? It's testing for our growth for our understanding. I know that I've shared, not earlier this year, but on a previous occasion, I shared with you about my own testing of way, way back at the beginning of my ministry in my first full-time pastorate at Oban. It was difficult for me. It was a health problem that literally uh, took me off my legs. I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand to preach. 
but it was one of the most profound growing times I've ever experienced. Not at first. At first, I argued with God. I'll confess now, I, I, I was so arrogant that I was saying things to God like, look what I've given up for you. Thinking of my career with IBM and such things. Look what I've given up for you. And just literally a year or so into ministry, I'm taken away from the pulpit because I couldn't stand. But I learned something over time. God didn't answer that question initially, but eventually I got a hold of what he was saying. And my question changed from, why, Lord, to what? What are you teaching me? What is it about? What do I need to learn? Challenge for this morning. Sorry, all these challenges. I think you've had them coming at you for weeks, but that's okay. I think we need to be challenged. And the challenge this morning, what are your thoughts, for example, about not being able to sing? Our opening song, sing praise, sing praise. How do we deal with that? The Scripture tells us sing praise. It was a challenge for me personally when our church started to meet in Creef, and likewise we couldn't sing and I'd been playing keyboard for them before the lockdown etc and my history um, even before I committed my life to the Lord I was a chorister in the Church of England down south for many years as a A mid-teenager, I moved from chorister to organist and became organist and choir master for a number of years. Then when we went, or at least I was sent on assignment to America, I found myself engaged in music there too, and I became a worship leader. Yes, I learned to play guitar. That was quite different from the organ. So... Music, singing, was so important to me. And, and i be honest, I lamented the loss of it. I really did. Does that sound familiar? Do you get a link, for example, to, again, your message that you received last week about the idol of the familiar? It was my idol. There was no doubt about it. But I was challenged. And I was challenged with this question. What does God hear when I sing? What does God hear when I sing? I'm going to come back to that question but let's turn to Scripture again. And um, the, the passage is about worship and praise. And it starts with those words, sing to the Lord. It's taken from First Chronicles chapter 16 and verses 23 to 31. And yes, you'll hear it. You'll, you'll recognize it in terms of worship and praise and honor of the Lord. Let's hear his word. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord 
and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, O family of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Amen. It's the word of the Lord. Now again, as I made that preparation and, and had the, the notes before me, or the, the words of that scripture before me on my computer, I looked at it and I thought, actually, I'm not going to be doing my usual practice of exploratory preaching. Normally, I would delve into that word and, and kind of tease it out for you. Rather today, with that background of that passage and many others, some that Harry was reading earlier in the Psalms, lots of passages about worship and praise and singing. And I think, uh, if I got it right, that Jim McFarland a few weeks ago was reminding you of the need to praise. So we should. God is worthy of all our praise and worship, and it is a crucial part of life as a believer. An important part of our gathering together. So a few challenging questions coming up, just as a warning. Do you come to church as a giver or a getter? Is it about what you get or about what you give? It certainly struck me over many years in the pastoral role. At the church door, many conversations were about what the person had received. They'd come to get. And, okay, there's some good in that, because if they're getting the word of the Lord, then that's helpful, that's appropriate, it's right. But there's more to it than that. Again, uh, I've been just bowled over by the links to Michael's message last week. He spoke of the body and all parts of the body working together. Each part of the body having its role. And when we turn in that direction, we're turning to the area of giving. What are we giving? So many people I've seen, heard, recognized, moving to a new area and seeking a church. And what do they do? They go church shopping. They'll go and visit a church, and the questions they're asking themselves is, what's best for me? Do I like this? Do I like the music? Do I like the people? Is it good for me? almost like they're going into a supermarket and picking the right things off the shelves. Does this suit me? 
My suggestion, and I think it's based in Scripture, is that that shouldn't be the way we do it. Rather than asking, do I like the music? Do I like this? Do I like that? I think what we should be saying is, Lord, is this where you want me? Is this your calling? Have I got something to learn and to give in this place? You see, that thing about being a giver or a getter, I don't think it should be either or. I think it is both. I think we do receive, but we also give. And we share. We play our part. And it is true, I think, that praise and corporate praise particularly is an opportunity to share together, to give and to get. But we can't sing. So let's focus on singing for a moment. Let's focus on the music side. And again, I've got some questions to ask you. What's most important about a praise song? For example, is it the music or the words? For example, the last song that was on the screen for us here, with my whole heart, I will praise you. Were we able to engage with that? Can we sing or can we praise with our whole heart when we can't sing and let it out? Was I able to gain gauge with that song with my whole heart? Now, as I said a moment ago, I acknowledge that for me, this was a particular problem. I had those years in music ministry. And then when it came to the point of not being able to sing in our normal way, and we had to listen. And I, I, I'll be honest, I struggled with just trying to listen or watch a video. But then one Sunday, I was actually sat at the keyboard in our church because I had played for the opening of the service, just background music and so on. And um, Pastor Jim wanted me to play as a background to a quiet time of prayer and contemplation. So I was actually on the platform at the keyboard, but I wasn't playing for the song. And the song was being played on the screen and the music was playing. And there was an angst inside of me because I couldn't engage with the song. But then I lifted my eyes and I saw a figure standing. One of our members of the church. Not huge in stature because the person has Down syndrome and is quite short, but was standing there and I'll try and imitate the stance. Bit of a smile, open arms, closed eyes, slight movement to the music. And I thought, that's worship. That's someone who is engaged with what's happening. Now, I've learned so much from that person over the years. But now I saw someone who was receiving and giving even in the silence. It was true worship. 
I was challenged. And afterwards in prayer, I thought about that question that I posed earlier. What does God hear when I sing? What does God hear? Again, as an example, think of two people in the church, and they could be sitting close to each other. One's got a brilliant, good voice, and the other can't sing for toffee. Why are some of you smiling? I can see behind your mouth. Does that ring a bell? Some people can sing with a good voice. Some people can't. What does God hear? In our church, we have a couple of mics fastened to the ceiling, which were installed as, they're called ambient mics. They're to pick up the congregational singing. But if you were to be there and you looked at them, one is pointing that way and one is pointing, they're not equally spaced. Why was that? Because the person who set up the mics wanted to avoid the person sitting there. Because that person had a good, loud voice, but by golly, was it off-key. But what does God hear? I mean, we used to joke about that person quite a bit, but then one time when I was in the pastorate and I used to go and sit at the side during worship, we had a, a worship leader, a music group, and I would sit at the side and I was watching this person singing loud, wrong, off-key, but engaged. Totally, utterly completely engaged in praise. What did God hear? He didn't hear the, well, I'm sure he didn't hear the off-key music. It wasn't a problem, I'm sure, to God. What God heard is the heart. What's going on in the heart. So the person with a bad voice can worship equally as the person with the good voice. It's possible to worship God whatever style of music. So many places I've been where they've been absolutely caught up with either the old or the new and for many years, there was this conflict between the two. The truth is that both styles can carry the praises of the people if the heart is in the right place. And that was the key. That was the key that I felt in my heart. And I, I prayed, Lord... I want to give my heart in worship, even in the silence. Then, then I found out that I could engage with YouTube and other sources of online music and so on, worship. I feel my heart stirred by these songs. Yes, I miss the corporate praise, but you know, the corporate praise can be a distraction. It can be. It can take away from our focus on the Lord. Focus on Him. I want to encourage you to seek that connection. It's already been referred to this morning. It's in the songs. Harry mentioned it. The Lord has brought this together. There is more. There is always the place for learning.
in my notes here, I've just got a little red capital L. Learning. A disciple of the Lord is a learner. And we're always learning. And we can always be learning. Even in our mature years, said he gently, we can still learn from the Lord. So what is he teaching you today? What is he teaching us in this experience? I think you're getting already lots and lots of pointers of what the Lord is doing in our midst. And yes, we are restricted. Yes, there are things that frustrate us in the way we have to meet and the, these ridiculous masks. I've spent the morning, so some of you, pulling the bottom or pulling the top just to get the breath. What's God saying? What's he teaching? And I think one of the keys is the place of our individual hearts. Where am I with the Lord? Is he teaching me this place? I would like to read that passage of Scripture once more. But as I do, I'm going to read it fairly slowly. And I would like to ask you to be conscious of opening your heart to the Lord. Not to me, not to my voice, but to the Word and to the Lord Himself and to the Spirit of the Lord who is here ministering to us as a body of Christ, but also ministering to you as part of that body. The open heart of worship. Yes, it says, sing to the Lord, right at the beginning, those four words. We're not singing, but our heart can sing. And the Lord, the Lord is listening to your heart. If you want to close your eyes as I read, that's fine. But I'll just encourage you to contemplate, to practice worship as I read these words. Sing, sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. I'll stop there. Let's just pray. Let's open our hearts in prayer together. Gracious Father, 
Once again, Lord, we turn to you as vulnerable people. Father, so conscious that none of us get it right all of the time. But thank you, Lord. Thank you for your patience, for your patient endurance with each one of us. Father, thank you that you are ever present, whatever the circumstances. Thank you that you are in control. And Lord, where we are inhibited, you are not. You are free. And free, Lord, I pray, to work in each of our lives. That even in the difficult times, the difficult circumstances, we learn and we grow and we move forward in your name. Lord, as we were praying earlier, that line from the Psalm of Psalms came to my mind, and it's so true. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Father, I pray that that would be true for each one of us, that we would find the pathway that you are creating for each one and for this fellowship here in Ivikili. And Lord, that this part of your body would be enabled to walk confidently in that path of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, help us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit as our help and our strength at every step. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.